Hi everyone, welcome again to another session of Paris Live videos. Today is going to be totally different. I'm sorry, I have no idea what's happening to the video quality today and I cannot be asked to change it. The most important thing is that you can hear me. Um, so today's session, I'm not feeling good, I've got a cold, so I'm trying to talk really well. Today's session is going to be very different. It's still going to be about first time buyers or anyone who wants to buy a home, but it's going to be more from a Christian perspective and what God says about should you buy a home, should you not buy a home, where do you decide to buy? And then also the last one is how do you plan to buy in the sense of finances? Um, I'm... I may do a follow up session about, I have notes here. So if you see me looking at my notes, I have notes here. I may do a follow up session on once you've got the home, how do you decorate a home and all that. I also may do a follow up session on what to look for when you're purchasing the home. There's a lot of information in the Old Testament on what to look for when you're buying a home. And then also using the house wisely. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, just give me a second. Let me record the audio on a different phone as well because sometimes the audio gets really low and I don't want it to happen today. So I'm just going to record it on a different phone. Yep. So like I said, we're going to talk about should I buy a house? Some people argue between rent and buy. Um, Where do I buy? And the last one is finances and how to get around the finances to buy or planning financial planning towards purchasing a home and then in future sessions we'll talk about using the house wisely and how god will help you furnish it or what to do with the house or what to do with the house once you've got it so we're going to go straight in and remember i'm not a pastor i haven't trained in theology or anything like that i'm just sharing what i took from the scriptures and please feel free to put what you believe in the chat as well it's up to you if you have your own beliefs that you don't think that you should own a home or whatever it is or you have contrary beliefs to or you've got separate verses to contradict what i'm saying please put in the chat it's our faith i believe what i'm saying so we'll share it but if you've got other scriptures as well to support what i'm saying please do feel free to share it in the chat and that'll be great to know so the first one that I want to talk about is should I buy a house? And the comment that I made was we have to buy a house is fulfilling God's word. Um, there's so many scriptures in the Bible that talks about God saying that buy a house in certain terms. And as we know in the Bible, a house can also, our body is a temple. A house can mean different things to different people, but uh, we can go to the Strong's Concordance to try and understand what the house means in the context of the verse that is given. But for the literal understanding of some of the verses, again, I've got my notebooks here. I've got a few scriptures here. I'll read them and I'll talk through some of them. So the first one I said was to fulfill God's word. And some of the scriptures that I have here is you can make notes and you can refer to this later. And it's always good to read the Bible for yourself when people quote verses to you so it was always good to read them and understand what they're saying and believe check it cross check it so the first one is Deuteronomy 23 verse 8 it says the lord shall command the blessings upon thy storehouses right and isaiah 32 verse 8 says and my people shall dwell in a peaceful habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet restful places Okay, so this doesn't only apply to should I buy a house, it also applies to where do I buy. You make sure that those places are quiet resting places and they are sure dwellings. So the way I see sure dwellings is in two ways. It's not like you're renting somebody's house and you're not sure when the rent is up and if they ever kick you out, um, you're not sure of rent increases and stuff like that. If you buy your own house, whether outright cash, which is the most stable one, it means that you own the house that's it's yours if you have a mortgage if it's fixed for a period in the uk we have two years five two year fixed rates three year fixed rate five year fixed rate and then when the first initial rate comes to an end you always keep remortgaging until you pay off the house over the term of the mortgage so here it says and my people shall dwell in a peaceful habitat it actually says peaceable habitation and ensure dwellings so if you've got a mortgage you know that it's fixed no one is going to kick you out of your house We'll talk about the finances a bit later on because someone argued that, oh, what if I don't have money to pay my mortgage? Same as if you don't have money, you won't be able to pay your rent. So similar things, but um, 
in sure dwellings and in quiet places. So sure dwellings, apart from the fact that you know that the security and you know be kicked out of the house. Another way of looking at sure dwellings. And I should have brought the concordance to look at it. I could look at my phone, but I don't want to distract. So maybe worth you going to concordance, looking at Isaiah 32 verse 8 and looking at the meaning of a sure dwelling. And another way I see sure dwelling is that it's a stable home. You've done the survey, you've changed it as a stable home. It doesn't have any structural problems. It doesn't have any water issues, flooding issues or anything like that. So that's part of sure dwellings. So that's the second one. The third one, I have is um and this is really i like this particular one it says proverbs 24 verse 27 it says prepare thy work and after that build a house so god is actually saying that prepare your work make sure that it's being profitable and after that build a house so god is actually giving us an instruction to work to to find a means of income make a profit and then build a house but remember we all cannot build houses outright but you could buy a house via mortgage whatever it is so i like this verse a lot proverbs 24 is a direct instruction it says prepare thy work make profit and then build a house and after that build a house the next one is jeremiah 29 29 verse 5 and it says build you build houses dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. So God is actually giving us an instruction to build houses. And people are like, oh, it's the Old Testament. It doesn't apply to us. But you, we recite Psalm 91. That's the Old Testament. Why do you recite it? If, 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 if it's the Old Testament, then we shouldn't be reciting, no weapon formed against me shall function, which is, um, I think it's Isaiah 54. Then you shouldn't be saying it. You shouldn't be saying Psalm 91. Um you shouldn't be reciting those in the Old Testament. So the Old Testament is surely applicable in those days as it is now as well. So I'm going to read it again. Jeremiah 29 verse 5, it says, Build ye houses, dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. So I've seen them with some houses with a covenants. So if you buy a house, it's got a deed, and the deed has some covenants in them. And some of the covenants will say, oh, you cannot maybe have poultry at home. You can have livestock at home. But in other um, deeds of certain houses, like the older houses, there's no such commits co covenants or deed entitlement. So you could basically rear chickens, you could basically grow something. But here specifically says build ye houses, dwell in them, and plant gardens. So although you may not be building, you know, you may not be doing a self build because not everyone has opportunity to do it. And I think that's a Christian, you can also have faith to do that, especially if you are in Africa or the US where it's easy to do that. By the UK, it's not that common, but I still believe that if you're Christian and you have the faith to do, you can do it. But build houses, you can still buy a mortgage and pay it off. You're still building your house. Okay. The next one is Joshua 1 verse 3. And this one, people would argue it, but I think it's still, it says, every place that the sole of your feet treads or trots, I have given it unto you. So, I'm not saying that go into a place where you know that it's dedicated to idols or it's used for something evil and you go and sit there some claim in it when it hasn't been sanctified or anything, just claiming everything on. But God is trying to tell us that when we go into a land, a new place, because we are there, we can claim the goodness of the land. Okay. So that's what so when I when you're going viewers and stuff like that, it might be a good idea that when you step in a place that you really like and you feel like God is calling you to it, you put your foot there and you declare. Because my feet have trod here, every good thing here, I claim it. Even in your offices, even in wherever it is, just claim the good of the land. So I think that is one verse that God says. Another one which you argue that should I buy a house? So all these things I'm saying is God is giving an instruction to buy a house. Okay, you can choose to rent this up to you. Find verses that says God says you should rent. That's up to you. God says we should own so I'm not sure where the renting argument comes from. We've all rented before in the sense that there are times that that's how we all start and then we move on unless your parents are fortunate enough to leave your property that you don't ever have to rent. But yes, the next one is um, Deuteronomy 29. It says, God blesses you and shall... God blesses us and we shall lend unto many nations and we shall rule of, reign over them, but it shall not reign over us. Okay, one way of having your own freedom is having your own place. Um, I remember that when COVID happened, people couldn't, if you had your own house or your own flat or something, you were free to do stuff. Although it was a bit, um, can I say, it was a bit like you were stuck at home in one place. But if you had a house, you could go into a garden. If you had an apartment, you go on a balcony, if you had that option. So that's also important. One thing that I've got to also say is um, 
Joshua 24 verse 13. It says here, I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you didn't build. So God is going to give us places that he's given it to us. Why are we not claiming it? He's already given it to us. Why are we not claiming it? And us claiming it may be us building one outright or it may be us he's given it to us but we have to claim it through regular payments and then owning it finally. But basically, he said, I have given you a land. And if you buy a house, you own the land as well. Apart from all these leasehold stuff. But luckily, the government is trying to get rid of leaseholds. So uh, if, you, if you own the house, you own the land as well. So he says, I've given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you didn't build. So go claim whatever God has given you. There's one verse I wrote down here. I want to read it quickly. And then... We can continue. It's Proverbs 16, verse 19. Give me a second. Um, uh, oh, come on. I thought my Android has a ship. I had a, okay. Proverbs 16. What is this? Let me just Google it. Proverbs. I should have brought my Bible next to me. Oh, it's actually here. <laughs> this is my Bible. Hold on one second. Proverbs 65. Psalms, Proverbs. Proverbs 65. I don't think it's... No, this is not Proverbs. This is Psalm 65. Proverbs is enough. 65. Psalm 65. Or it might be Isaiah, actually. It's Isaiah 65. Apologies for that. I'm just going to search for this quickly. Isaiah 65 verses 21 to 22. So I'm going to read it from the, what is this? New King James Version. It says, I hope it's the right verse. Okay, so it's correct. Right it says, they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their food. So God is saying, we shall build houses. And this is the verse that comes out of the glorious new creation. After god has judged them and god has done that he then restores them and he's telling them that the promise he's given them is that they shall build houses and they shall live in them like you're not going to die someone is not going to take your place you built it you will live in them it's not like you're going to build houses and someone else come and live in something that you have struggled for so god is saying that we shall build houses and we shall live in them so god is actually giving that promise so why are we not taking that if god says you shall build a house why are you not taking that promise why are we not living in that promise so the argument shall i build a house i've given you so many verses that you can use that to just why yes buy a house or apartment as a starter and then move on it's up to you um matthew 8 verse 20 and i know that here jesus was talking about something different but it says that even the foxes have nests the, the foxes have lairs and the birds have nests that they live in but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head right so when you so this can even transition into where do i have to buy and god give me the finances to buy you can say god your word says that even the fox the foxes are places to lay the birds have nests even the son of but the son of man doesn't have so you could go to god and say god um even the birds have places to nest can you give me my own home you go to back to god with his word right so you can say that and before we transition into the next bit which is basically where to buy or how to decide where to buy one verse that i want to say is proverbs 16 verse 9 it says a man deviseth his own way but the lord directed his path so transitioning into where to buy seeking guidance on where to buy that's one thing i'll say that although maybe you say you want to go and live in texas in the states that's what you have decided to do but then god is the one who will direct your path and we will go through a few verses of how god directs our path if we're really seeking to do that and then you can progress from there so the first verse i like and this is a verse that i think when i was 16 or 17 my dad gave me a bible it was one of the first verses that i wrote in the bible and it's jeremiah 33 verse 3 it says Ask me and I will tell you, I will show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. So if you were going to buy a home and you ask the question, God, should I buy a home or should I buy an apartment? God, should I buy a two bed, a three bed, a four bed, a five bed? What should I buy? Ask God and he'll tell you. I know that this verse was meant for God to tell us the secret things so we can pray, but 
if he says ask me now tell you grace and such about things it means that god is happy for you asking anyway so that's a way to ask and with that verse as well he could also show you why you shouldn't be going to a particular place so for example like i said assuming you wanted to go and live in texas for example or in the uk you wanted to go and live in a place like let's say not in, um or you're going to live in let's say somewhere like wells or something god when you ask god using jeremiah 33 verse 3 he's a good father he will tell you why you shouldn't go or why you should go so those are things to look out for and let's say if you saw a house and you really liked it and you went to god with it god might tell you why you shouldn't buy the house maybe there's a new railway line coming up on so most of most of most i know most people do their due diligence and go on planning website to find out what's happening in the neighborhood in the next 10 years 15 years um 20 years master planner people do all that but there are things that you may not know there might be hidden things on the land that you have no idea about there might be things about the family that lived there before that you have no idea about and you have to struggle and pray and cancel all that there might be that there may be a troublesome neighbor or there may be one moving in five years later whoever it is but basically he says ask me and i'll tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know so depend no matter the location the house your but whatever it is do ask god and he will direct you so again we are talking about where do i buy and how god comes into that the next one is i think it's second some second samuel 7 chapter 7 10 to 11 it says i like this one like I like the fact that you can go to the word of God and you can find answers to stuff, but it's so hard for us not to go. Like I scroll on Instagram looking at nonsense when I could actually speak the word of God. And it says second Samuel 7, 10 to 11. It says, I will appoint a place for my people. So God himself will appoint that place for you. Like you don't have to struggle and be in two minds and undecisive about it. So like he says, I will appoint a place for my people. And he wasn't speaking to us at the time, but he was speaking to the Israelites. But the thing is that if he speaks to them, he can speak to us as well. And we are the descendants of Abraham anyway, I believe so. So I will appoint a place for my people and will plant them there that they will dwell in a place of their own and no one will trouble them anymore. Honestly, if you're looking for a place to buy, write this verse down and actually use this verse in your search. I'm going to read it from the Bible. I'm going to read the whole thing from the Bible so that we can, I'm going to read the whole thing from the Bible so that we can have like a good understanding of it. Um, give me a second, second Samuel. Oh, okay, so Samuel, I, was going, I was going to look at the index and find out where second Samuel was. Second Samuel 7. Sorry, I'm flipping the book really loud. I'm putting the Bible really loud. Sorry about that. Seven. So I'm going to read second Samuel 7, 10 to 11. Yeah. And this was part of the covenant that God made with David. So I'm just going to read it quickly. And I know that it's not because of my Bible school. I know that because my Bible has indexes in them. So I understand what it is. So 10 to 11, it says, oh God, it's so good. It says, <laughs> I'm going to start from nine because something interesting. And I says, and I have been with you wherever you have gone and I've cut off all your enemies from before you and have made you a great name like the name of the great men who were on earth. Moreover, <laughs> I will appoint a place for my people Israel. So put your name there. You say, so if it's me, I say, moreover, I will appoint a place for Abana and will plant her. And she will dwell in a place of her own and move no more. Nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress her anymore as previously since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people, my people, and have caused me to rest from all my enemies. Also, the Lord tells me that he will make me myself a house. So honestly, second Samuel verse 10 to 11, but starts from verse 9 and declare those promises over yourself. When you're deciding where to buy, he says, I will appoint a place for you. So he knows whatever the right house is, the right neighborhood is. He said, he said I will appoint a place for you. So that's one thing to look at. Oh, time is going. I wanted this to be 30 minutes. I'm just going to rush through this and make it easy. And I, I just want to say a quick thing. When you're in the house buying journey, the house searching journey, and it feels like everything is going bad and it's not, it doesn't seem like happening. Although you've read all these scriptures, you believe what God is saying. God says he's appointed a place for you. Like second Samuel says, this is a verse that I came across. Numbers 33 verse 53. It says, and you shall dispossess. 
the inhabitants who are there. So whoever is stopping you from buying your home or whatever it is, it says, you shall dispossess those people and you will go and dwell there. For God has given you the land to possess. So if you are having struggle, you have difficulties in doing that. Numbers 33 verse 53 is one thing that you can stand on and you can look at that. One verse that where to buy, one verse that I say as well as the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is slave to the land lender. That's Proverbs 22 verse 7. And we will cover that in the how to plan budgetly, budget wise for that. So I'll cover that briefly, but I wanted to bring it up here. And a few other verses before we transition to the last one about how to financially plan on buying a home is Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, which is also very pregnant in this situation. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart in every, in every way, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So you trust in the Lord to say, God, you said I'll buy a house. I trust you that indeed I'm going to buy a house in every step of your way. So I'm going to view is I'm going to acknowledge you, my viewings, the viewings I'm going, I'm going to acknowledge you by telling you about it, by seeking you as I go for my viewings or whatever you're doing in the house buying journey. And then because you trust in him, because you're acknowledging him, his involvement in it, he's surely going to direct your path to the places. Like I said, I said, he's going to leave you to a safe. One of the verses says, he's going to lead you to a safe and a secure place that you will dwell, that no one, like second Samuel says, appointed a place for you that no one will disturb you anymore so god will direct your path to those places that's proverbs 3 5 to 6 and then one as well is so when you're deciding where to buy proverbs 31 verse 16 was talking about so the whole of proverbs 31 was a it was a mother telling his son what he should be and the second part was telling his son the sort of woman that she looked for but the whole church has made proverbs 31 about oh the proverbs 31 woman blah 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 but basically it was a man giving it was a woman giving her son advice on what to look for in a woman however in the bit where he tells his wife his son what to look for in a woman 31 verse 16 it says the woman considers a house and he buys it what I want you to do is to go and look for the meaning of considers, right, in the Hebrew, and then you would understand. So when you are looking for a place to buy, consider, consider, look at a lot of things. Is it the right place for me to live? Is it the right time for me to buy? And remember, right time is always God's time. Is it in the right neighborhood? Is it safe? Is it finance? Everything. So he says he considers a place to buy it and with the fruit of her hands. So you consider something and with the fruit of your hands, like your income, your stuff like that, she plants a vineyard once she's by. So she considers a place and then buys it. So consider that word is very strong. So you have to go and take a strong concordance. Don't just take it as, oh, I considered, but there's a lot that goes into it. So take a strong concordance and really understand the Hebrew meaning of the word consider, not the way that English has put it. Now we are going to transition into finances or planning financially to buy. But I want to use a verse to transition us into that. And the verse is Proverbs. Hold on. Okay, the, the scripture is, I, I haven't got the reference correctly here, but the scripture is, except God build something, we labor in vain. So if you know the verse, please tell me. I don't want to go back to my phone and my Bible and look for it. So it says, except God builds it, we build in vain. So even though we decided we want to, God has said, God has need confirmed, yes, buy your home. You are deciding where to buy. Make sure that you are doing it with God because if God is not in it, you're going to do it in vain. You're going to move in and there's going to be troubles. You're going to regret buying it. So except God builds it, we build in vain. Okay. So that's even with the finances bit. So now we move into finances. I like talking about finances because I think that money is so important. The church has put a stigma around money, but there's so many verses in the Bible that talks about the importance of money. The problem is a love of money, which is a sin, but money itself is not sin. Okay. If you listen to Jewish people, I listen to a Jewish rabbi called Rabbi Daniel Lapin, and he explains that even in the creation story, God is mentioned quite a number of times. So because we read an English version of the Bible, we don't really get to see the original words that were used. So money is itself is not a problem. I think money is good. I think wealth is good. If you're not wealthy, you cannot give it. You cannot help anyone. Wealth gives you the freedom to do the things that you have been called to do. So yes, wealth gives you the freedom to when people say, oh, they're rich, they're rich. No, there's nothing wrong with the rich. And I, and I also believe that when you hate something, you cannot 
to get a blessing from that thing. So I'm not sure. But we, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about how to financially plan to buy the home. So should I buy a house? God says, yes, buy a house. Where to buy? God has given you buy here. And now you have to financially plan to buy the home. Okay. I have other videos on this platform that tells you what to look for when you're buying, new build, old build, um, other things. So where do you live? All that stuff. But here's the biblical some of the biblical verses or scriptures that talk about planning to buy a home okay and it may not necessarily apply to this in particular however the principles i believe remain the same okay so the first one is i like this one is luke 14 28 to 30 it says no one builds a house first without first sitting down and counting the cost i'm going to take my bible and i'm going to read that for us luke 14 20. Sorry, I'm flipping my book. It's quite noisy. I'm flipping my Bible. It's quite noisy. Luke 14, 28 to 30. It says, this was Jesus talking, actually. It, he was actually talking about leaving everything to follow him, right? So it was in the context of us becoming his disciples and doing everything his way. But I believe that it's also applicable with everything that we do in life, that we have to count the cost of everything that we're going to do. So it says, uh, for which of you intending to build a tower so we can put a house here intending to build a house does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it lest after he has finished laying the foundation and is not able to finish it all will see it and mock him okay so that's a verse so you're going to buy a house why are you not planning even the bible says that we should plan we're going to buy something you're not planning to buy it well, how much does it cost how much you can you can so far as predict or preempt what the interest rates are going to be but what is my budget what am i very comfortably saving if i'm stretched so when they do your mortgage pre-qualifications and all that what they do is they actually check they actually stress test you so the interest rate let's say two percent they stress test you to let's say seven percent to see if it was seven percent can you afford it so you plan it can i pay for my survey fees so you, you you are just not paying for it down you are you're just not looking at the monthly payment just because you pay rent of let's say a thousand five hundred pounds a month and I know it's not fair that you can pay rent of a thousand five hundred pounds, but yet you go and buy a house and you're like, no. But the point is, they ask for a deposit to me because it's a guarantee, it's a risk aversion tool for them. Can you pay for your surveys, utility bills, all of that stuff? You have to count for it. You have to cut for any repairs. Have you got an emergency fund? Should something happen to the house? Can you pay for it? So he's basically saying that you have to count the cost before you do these things. The next one that I want to dwell on is Proverbs 24, verse 27. And it says, prepare thy work. Remember we read it earlier when I, he says, um, prepare your work and make it fit thyself. So prepare your work and make it fit yourself means prepare your work, find a job, do a job, be good at it. Make sure that it pays it's good enough to fit your needs enough for you to give out. So if my thing was given, God says we should all give anyway, so we should be given. But if I have extra thing of maybe supporting the homeless or supporting women in domestic violence or supporting men's mental men's mental health, then I should find a job and make it fit within my within the things that I do. And after that, I buy a house. So once I have a job that is able to make me afford all that then i can buy a house but basically that job should be able to cover all those costs that's what it means that's proverbs 24 verse 27 the next one is proverbs 37 verse 4 to 5 and i think oh no psalms 37 4 to 5 it says delight yourself in the lord and he gives you the desires of your heart commit your ways to the lord and he shall bring it to pass so you've delighted yourself in the lord you've committed everything to him although you feel and this is where the faith bit comes in Although you feel like your finances are only enough to buy a two-bed house, we've had so many testimonies of where God has somehow, some way provided the funds or given favor for someone to even buy a home that was actually bigger than what they envisaged to be. So that's what it is. And he shall bring it to pass. It says, commit your ways to the Lord, trust him and he shall bring it to pass. So God says, yes, buy the house. He's told you where to buy. You've counted the cost before building it because people don't laugh at you. So people don't laugh at you. You've prepared your works. 
um, you've delighted yourself in the Lord, you've committed the ways to him, you trust him and see God will bring it to pass. So that's one way to do it. Budgeting is so important, right? So you do that. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 says, but you shall remember the Lord, your God. It is seed that gives you the power to make wealth, right? Wealth in that concept is a the power to make wealth. Wealth in that concept was money. You won't believe it. Go and look at the concordance. It's money to make wealth. So wealth is just not, oh, he's has 10 cars and all that. Wealth means your health, everything as well, right? So if God gives you the power to make wealth, God is going to give you the money to buy the house. House is considered prosperity. Wealth in the Bible means prosperity. You have to be prosperous in your health, prosperous in your relationships. I think the Jewish have a four-way finances, relationships, health. And I think career, something in four areas, finances, relationship, health, and I think career or family, something like that. So all those things, he says, he'll give you money to be prosperous in all those areas. So he gives you the power to make wealth. The power is not like power. He's giving you the money and everything else to make, to be prosperous in every area. Go and argue with the Lord. If you want to take it as blatantly as it says there, he give you the power to whip God. You can say power means wisdom. He give you the wisdom to go and make money. So if you're planning for finances, trust God to make ways for you to make wealth. Sometimes he just tells you, look, woman, you spend 500. If, if you had a budget sheet, let's say you had a budget sheet and you're tracking your finances for two years and you were really good at doing it, you could see a trend that maybe every year you spend about 200 pounds every month buying clothes. That's £2,400 a year. If you were in the UK and you put that in a lifetime ISA and they gave you 25% of that 2400 that's £600 extra. That could pay for a survey of a house. So those are the things that give you the power to make wealth, wisdom, all those things. So it's a finance and stuff. The next one is Philippians 419. And this is also very good because it says, you know that one. It says, God shall supply all our needs according to your riches in glory by christ jesus so what do you need to buy the house you want that actually there's a red row house it's called the marlboro and there's one called the richmond and there's one called the highgate um i don't i no longer like the sunnydale because now my taste has gone up the the highgate that oh actually the high grove by red row limited is a very pretty house the high grove the marlboro um the high gates looks good but not really <laughs> um it's got like five it's got three floors ground floor first one second floor the space is good but the high grove is very pretty the marlboro is also a nice house i've just seen a new house type called the overton which is being built in litchfield actually that's nice but anyway <laughs> digression so whatever you've seen god says he will supply your need so if that house is a need Assuming you were, uh, God is going to give you four kids in future. He knows that need. So he's going to give you that house before the kids come. So that's a need. If you currently have three children and you live in a one bedroom flat, that's a need. God knows that's a need. God has to give you a house. So God will supply all you need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So stand on that word. And the last one before we go is Matthew 6, 31 to 33. And it says, Make no thought of what shall I eat, what shall I drink, because even the birds of the sky, blah, 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 right? You, everyone know, every, most, almost every Christian knows that voice. So you can go and speak to God and say, God, like, these birds are all happy, you know, they're all doing that. Can you sort me out here? So it's just, I'm just joking. We're coming to end and I just feel like joking. But seriously, I mentioned quite a few of the scriptures. I'll try and put in the notes. Hopefully this is helping. And um, for the singles... When someone tells you don't buy a house, it's too big, whatever it is, like I said, God knows the need and he's going to give you the house that is right for you. As long as you're not being greedy, but God knows your need. There's nothing like greed if God knows your need. If you're single and you want to buy a five bedroom house, people may think that it's too big for you now, but there's a reason why God allows you to buy because he knows the need, future need for you come. What if God is going to give you triplets? You never know if that, I don't know. So yeah so for the for the triplet uh, for the singles there's so many verses in the bible like there's one that says widen your tents so you're in a one bedroom flat right now you feel like i'm in a one bedroom flat it's just me but i just feel like i need to buy a three-bed house or i need to buy a four-bed house or i need to buy a five-bed house take it to god because 
He says, widen your tents. So yeah, take it to God. And then I just saw, a, it says Psalm 113 verse 9. I just want to read it because I found it very interesting, actually. Um, Psalm 113 verse 9. Let's go back to the Bible. Psalm 113 verse 9. He says, he grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. So, for those who are widowed, man or woman who is widowed, and you feel like, oh, I don't know what's happening. Or you are a single woman, so, or you are a barren woman who hasn't had children yet. That home refers to he's going to put you in a home. It can be a church community. It can be he's going to bring your husband who already has kids. And this is like a joyful mother of children. God says none shall be buried in my land. So if you if you feel like I'm single, I haven't got kids yet, but I want a five bedroom house, go buy it because God may be bringing our children along. Okay. I've played the fool enough, but honestly, I just need to end this. Um, so those are a few scriptures I've shared. I've shared, should I buy a house? Is it God's plan for me to buy a house? And I've said, yes, buying a house, actually a fulfillment of God's word for us to buy a house. Where to buy, I've given us of scriptures about the Father God who direct us to those places and it has to be a safe place. And then um, finances to buy, the Bible is very clear that we have to plan to buy. So I'm going to share that. I'm going to leave it here. But I want to say a short prayer. I've never done this on this YouTube before. But I want to say a short prayer for anyone who is seeking a home or anyone who's in the process of buying but it's been very difficult or anyone who truly desires it but it's been kind of like a financial struggle. So I'm just going to pray briefly and then we'll end this video. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the God who directs our paths. We thank you for this session today. I didn't plan on doing the session, but I knew that I had to fulfill a promise of doing one video a month. So, Father God, this came to me and I felt it was the right time to do it. Thank you for giving me the scriptures to share today. I pray for everyone who is in the call today in the name of Jesus Christ, that whoever is in the process of purchasing a home, God, I pray for favor as long as they are in your will. Father God, if they deviated from where you want them to be, Father God, redirect them back to that place in the name of Jesus Christ. I also pray for those who are in the process, but there seems to be so much confusion or there seems to be so much lie. There seems to be so much hindrance to what you're doing. Your word says that, Father, they shall possess that place. So, Father God, we decree in the name of Jesus Christ that they possess that place in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for those who are in the planning stages, Father God, those who are deciding where to buy that God, as they seek you, as they desire you, as they go to you with your word, you will show them great and unsearchable things and you will direct them to those places. I also pray for those who are in the stages of putting their money together, God, I declare and I ask for wisdom for them that God, they use the right government schemes, Father God, the right ones, the godly ones, the ones that you have appointed them to it. God, I pray that they are more astute with their finances but most of all i pray father god that they have faith to know that you provide for the assignment that you've called them to i also pray for favor for them god that you will direct them in those areas i thank you god for this time i know that there's a reason why you asked me to share this and it may not have a, a lot of views right now but the right person is going to hear it i praise you jesus because you are lord i praise you jesus because your hand is all over this i magnify you and i glorify you father in Jesus' name amen so have a good night and i'll see you at the end of december where we'll do the other bit where i spoke about god or how god furnishes and all that so we we'll do that so have a good december and a merry christmas to you and remember jesus is the reason for the season yeah bye